sweetie. Oh, honey, you've got you've got something on your face. Mom. Way to go, Jay! Good job, buddy! You got this! Go, Slugger! Yeah! Mom! Did you brush your teeth? Did you really brush your teeth? Let me smell your breath. Mom! Okay, Jake, honey, this is the only thing I can find, all right? <laughs> Mom! Yeah, it's a compound fracture. <sighs> I'm sorry, sweetheart. You're gonna be okay. Mom? Well, you have a good set of crutches? <sighs> Seriously, Jake, what am I going to do with you? Mom. Hi, Jake. Hi. Ooh, she's really cute. Mom. Mom? Mom. Jake, sit up straight, honey. Mom. something on your face. Mom.
search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise and treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along Better than you.
and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And I
Church, we are so blessed, are we not? Our Jesus, our Father, has given us this peace. He has given us this wellness of heart. We are so honored that you would tune in, that you would worship with us. We would like to pray for you right where you're sitting, whether you're in your car, in your home, if you're listening with your kids, with your spouse, you're having breakfast and you just tuned in for church, we would like to pray for you. I want to pray for your families. This is, of course, Mother's Day, and we want to pray for your children and their children and their children. We want you to know that God loves you, and He has nothing but good for you and your family. So would you just agree with me in prayer now, Father, in Jesus' name? We thank you for our church Father, we thank you for each and every family that is represented. Father, we thank you for their children, Father, and their grandchildren, and for some of them, the children of their grandchildren. Father, we believe that they are blessed and highly favored. Father, we believe that you give us words to speak and to minister in our homes. Father, we believe that the spirit of peace has been deposited in us and that our words and our hearts are guarded in that peace. Father, we bless each and every individual. For those who need healing, we release the healing power of God upon them. Father, we believe for those who are struggling with darkness that light comes and drives out the darkness. Father, we thank you that for those who are concerned about their finances, Father, concerned about what's going on, Father, that you have blessed them with more than enough. Father, give them favor with everything that pertains to their finances. We believe, Father, that we are your kids and that you take care of your children. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, we'd like to thank you for being a part of our Church at Home weekend services. This is Mother's Day weekend. And I'm sad. I'm a little sad because I'm... Sandy and I have been here for 30 plus years, and for 30 plus years, 
this place is full on Mother's Day, and we dedicate babies and children. I get to pronounce names and work on the pronunciations all week long and have a great time with the families that have children that have five names and, uh, and all of the uh, hoopla that goes with the fun of Mother's Day. And, of course, at the end of the service, we always pass out these beautiful long stem red roses, but you're not here. So can you just sort of receive this by faith right now and, and be happy, Noah? A great, big, wonderful, happy Mother's Day to all of our church at home this weekend. We hope that you're enjoying the family, that you're going to get to cook outside. Maybe you get to go out to eat, bring some, fi- some food in, enjoy mom or your grandma or great-grandmother. So whatever category you fit in, we always honor all the ladies here at Family Life Church. So just know that you are in our hearts this weekend and we hope that you'll enjoy the remainder of the service in just a few minutes. At this time, we're going to go ahead and remind you of how thankful we are for your giving here at the church during this pandemic. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. You've been using all the different methods of giving, and once again, they're available at this moment. In fact, you'll see them on the screen in front of you. If you're using the app, that's perhaps the easiest way to give the new My FLC app. You can search for it on your iPhone or your Android. Go to your uh, app store and and download it. It's absolutely free. You can set up your account. It's very simple to give. Many of you give already online at myflc.com. You can continue to do so. Uh, some of you have been dropping it off here at the church. The office hours, again, are Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And there are drop boxes in the lobby where you don't even have to come in. We appreciate you doing that. And a lot of you, of course, are mailing in uh, your gifts every single week. And uh, to 220 Lake Road, Lake Jackson, Texas, thank you for doing that. You know, as I think about the tithe and those of you that tithe and give offerings and support, Brazoria County Dream Center, we want to thank you for stepping out in faith. You know, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The message paraphrase says there, Faith is your handle on what you cannot see. But I love the Passion Translation. The last part of Hebrews 11, one of the second half of the verse out of the Passion Translation says simply this, it is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. And you know, when I read that this week, I thought that is the definition of the tithe. It is the evidence needed to prove the unseen. What am I talking about? Every time I tithe, every time I give an offering, it reminds me that God has my back, that he is providing all of my need according to his riches in glory, that I'm giving my very best right off the top to God because he's giving me everything. So we are so thankful for your faithfulness to tithe, to continue to sow in your church. The church has been very healthy throughout the pandemic financially, and we thank you for doing that. Also, Brazoria County Dream Center is so thankful uh, for what you're doing there. They continue to feed hundreds and hundreds of families every single week through your wonderful donations and your wonderful support to BCDC. So you can go online to BCDC, or you can give that gift to Family Life Church, and we'll make sure that immediately the funds go to the Dream Center. So if you would right now, with your offering in mind, put your hand over your heart, and let's believe God together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the blessings of God. I release your blessings upon every single person watching Church at Home this weekend. Father, I thank you that you've rewarded every single person, that you're meeting every single need. Father, we thank you for blessings and increase. Father, we thank you for your provision. Father, we thank you for all bills paid off. And God, we honor you with the very best of our increase. We love you and we thank you for your provision in this great nation, for our economy, for all of our small business owners, Father, across this nation. We thank you for restoration of everything that has been challenged financially in every family. Father, I speak peace to every family now in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said amen and amen. Well, if you're with someone or maybe you're by yourself, Turn to them and say, I'm sure glad you came, you good-looking thing. You can do it right now. If not, just say to yourself, I'm here by myself, and I'm still good-looking. My best friend, Sandy, is going to minister the Word of God today, as is a wonderful Mother's Day tradition. She is an amazing gift to the body of Christ. 
I am so honored to have spent all these years with her, 40 years plus. She uh, reminded me this evening right before we recorded this that, uh, you know, your grandchildren are going to make sure, they need to make sure that your grandchildren marry women that are smarter than them just like you did. Can't argue with that, right? Because it's the absolute truth. Hope you enjoy the word. She's got a great word for you. Be blessed. Welcome to Mother's Day. I know you all are excited and you're planning all kinds of great things for the women of your life. I'd just like to say how much I love my mom, uh, my mother-in-law, Carol. My mom's name is Gail. They're both in Alabama. I'm sure you're watching because it is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We miss you. I know all of you feel the same about your mother, uh, your women, your wives, husbands. You know that you do know, guys that on Mother's Day, you're supposed to take care of your wife or the mother of your children because you're teaching your children that, right? So I know all of you are preparing food for her, buying her something special. Don't forget the flowers, candy, whatever you're supposed to do. Don't forget to take care of the lady in your life today. We welcome you to this service. Some of you are watching, and it's maybe on Saturday, but some of you are going to be watching on Sunday morning. We're so honored to have you. As you know, every Mother's Day, Pastor always asks me to speak, and so I'm going to be speaking this morning. I have a great message for you. It is an amazing thing what has been going on in our uh, nation, in our world, uh, in our stay, I talked to my son in Switzerland uh, yesterday. They talked about when they're going back to school, when they're trying to open up their economy. And it's kind of unique that it's kind of a worldwide thing. Everything's the same. And so one of the things that I have been just hearing the voice of God speak to me about is how do you walk through times like this, difficult times, troubled times, and how do you maintain a level of peace? 
because peace is a really unique thing uh, provided for us by the blood of Jesus, already part of our heritage. My introduction to the message, I'm going to read this to you. Peace allows us to overcome the problems that life hands us. It teaches us to survive, to live now, and to have the courage to confront each day. Retraining your mind to process life as it is rather than as you think it should be is a cornerstone of our faith and allows us to tap into the power of peace. Now, if you're following along on the app, then, of course, the notes are there, the outline is there, and I'll say this to you. Biblical peace can be defined as an inward um, sense of completeness or wholeness or an inner settling. So peace, uh, scriptural peace, biblical peace is an inner settling. I am at peace. There is a, a settledness within me, my mind, my will, and my emotions. Though chaos may be around me, within me is this peace. Then there would be two aspects to this peace. Letter A, making peace with God. Now that happened at salvation. Romans chapter 5 tells us, we're going to read out of the Passion here, just a couple of verses. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, has done for us. Our faith guarantees us permanent access, church. Our faith guarantees this for us. To this marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God, what incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. Basically, we are at peace with God because God has made his peace with us through Jesus. So because we are children of the Most High God, because Jesus lives in our heart, we are at peace with our Father because of what Jesus has provided for us. But here's the kicker, right? Here's the difference of knowing that I possess that peace and knowing that Jesus is in me and all the things that he has provided for me through my salvation. That's one thing. But how do you live each and every day finding your daily path of peace? John says this in chapter 16, and everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me, meaning in Jesus, will be in you and will give you great confidence. That word in the Greek means quietness of heart, a peace of heart, a settled heart. So the scripture says that the peace which is in me, in Jesus, will be in you and will give you this great confidence as you rest in me, for in this unbelieving world you will experience trouble and sorrows but you must be courageous for I have conquered or one translation says I have overcome the world number one then the peace in Jesus is in you church as you're sitting there in your household in your car wherever you may be listening to this message the peace of Jesus has been deposited into you if you go back to what John 10, 10 says, that he came to give us life and life more abundantly, then you could just substitute the word peace there. He came to give us peace and peace more abundantly. That means this life that he has provided for us, this peace that he has deposited into you, is so abundant that it is overflowing. Therefore, when you walk into chaos, when you walk into the room, when you walk into the dark places that life sometimes presents you, I want you to know this, the peace of God walks in. A settling walks in. Not because of you, but because of who lives in you. The peace of Jesus, number one, is in you. It is accessible for you. Number two, this peace enables you to live a life so full that it overflows to others. Number three, this peace is contagious, correct? Chaos is contagious. If you grew up in chaos, then you know how contagious it is. If you are around people who are in chaos, then do you not feel like kind of chaotic yourself? Peace is contagious. 
Chaos is contagious, so you can overflow with chaos or you can overflow with peace. You can overflow with a settling. You can overflow with something that Jesus has provided for you, not for you to keep, but for you to give away. Number four, when I know and understand what is in me and who is in me, then my entire world is enlarged. Amazing the walk that we walk with Jesus. Now, this is Mother's Day, so all of you sitting out there listening, uh, you've been thinking about the women in your life, men and, and ladies, you've been thinking about your own mother, maybe your sisters, your aunts, people who have been special to you. And I want you to know that in the midst of all this chaos going around us in the world, there is a settling deposited in you to minister to all those great women in your life and all the people that God has assigned you to. Roman numeral 2, if you're following with the outline, says you can find your peace in the midst of uncertain days. Boy, is that true? Now, I love what Matthew says in uh, chapter 11, and we're reading out of the Passion. We're going to start about verse 28. Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then the scripture says, then come to me. I want you to notice something, church. He does not say, follow me. He says, Come to me when the battles are raging, when you are weary, when you are uncertain, when you are hurting so badly that you cannot breathe, when life has just turned your world upside down. That's when the scripture said, when you are weary and the the burden is heavy, that is when Jesus says, I know you're already following me, but now I want you to purpose. I want you to stand up, get up, and come to me. Come back to the throne. Come back to peace come back to the place of prayer the rest of the scripture says I will refresh your life for I am your oasis simply join your life with mine learn or that word in the Greek means and to have an understanding or have knowledge of so the scripture says learn or understand my ways and you'll discover that I am gentle humble easy to please and you will find refreshment and rest That word means peace. You will be refreshed and find peace in Jesus. Letter A, faith is not understanding where we are going, but deciding to go anyway, no matter what life is throwing our way. Pastor's been saying this is faith over fear, and that is, of course, the enemy to peace, right? The fear. Fear wants you to come to him, to fear. And Jesus is compelling you to come to me to come back to a place of peace. I put in your notes here, letter B, it is not about where life takes you, but who goes with you in life, right? Boy, I've had a a different kind of life, right? Grew up kind of dysfunctional. Those of you who know me uh, have heard my story from alcoholism, domestic violence, to all the things that occurred as I grew up and as I uh, matured. And then I met Jesus and this peace settled me down. But I remember saying when Jesus first entered my heart, Jesus, I will never live a life of chaos, and I will always come back to the place of peace, always. And so I want you to know, because of who is in you and what is in you, you can thrive in the middle of waters that you do not understand. So life is like that. Now, I'm going to say this to you. Raising kids is like that. Many things happen. You know, raising children is, is a kind of a cool thing. Um, you set boundaries, you know, with, with your children. And uh, then as they get beyond the, you know, it's really kind of nice when they're toddlers and they're elementary age because you set the boundaries. You say jump and they say how high. And then they become teenagers and then you begin to lead them through relationships. And then they become adults and then you lead them through influence. So it is kind of a unique kind of paradigm that this is how life is because 
because of who is in you and what is in you, you can thrive in the middle of waters when you don't understand. And parenting is often about not understanding, not being sure you're making the right decision, not being sure you have what, what they need in you to help them navigate this life. But I want you to know this, God is good. He has always been good, and he is good today. He is good when you feel abandoned or broken. He is good when you are, you are suffering and you have had an unimaginable loss. He is good if you're in the middle of chemo. He is good if your children have turned their backs on the things of God and you continue to pray and believe God for them. God is good. He is good all the time. He will always be good, and he has nothing but good for his children. It's not about what happens to us. It's about who is in us. Let's talk then about the path of peace. There's a difference of finding the path to peace and finding the path of peace. I found the path to peace when Jesus came into my heart. That's when I realized that peace had been deposited in me. I walk the path of peace daily. Every day I get to get up and make the decision to step on the path of peace. Luke says this in chapter 1, verse 79, the word from heaven will come to us with dazzling light to shine upon those who live in darkness near death's dark shadow. And he will illuminate the path that leads to the way of peace. So the word of God brings illumination to the path that leads to the way of peace. So this is incredibly important because I possess peace, but that does not mean that I experience peace. Now, Letter A, finding peace in our daily walk is not finding the path to peace, right? Because I already possess the path to peace. When Jesus came into my heart, peace was deposited in me. Letter B, finding, the, the, finding peace in your daily walk is finding the path of peace, how to daily get up and walk. Now, I'm going to give you a great example of this and. All of you gentlemen, well, you will immediately understand this. Have you ever walked in the door, looked at the woman in your life, and asked her, Honey, do you have such and such? And then she turns and looks at you, and she says, You know what? It's in my purse. And then you gentlemen, you turn and you say to her, Where at in your purse? Because you know looking into a woman's purse is like going through a pit, right? And then she says, you know, it's on the outside pocket or the middle of the purse or whatever. And you know what every wise man does? He goes and he picks up his wife's purse and he brings it to her. And he says to her, why don't you look in the purse and tell me where to find it? So I brought my purse today. And just for, for, for sakes here... I'm going to go through my purse and see if I can't find my keys in the bottom of my purse. I know they're in there because I drove my car here earlier, right? So as I'm looking in there, I'm going to, I'm going to just go through my purse and see what all is in that purse. Well, let's see here. Um, oh, there they go. Underwear, clean underwear. As a matter of fact, Mom, I have two pairs of clean underwear in my purse. Just saying, because Mama told me always, you know what? When you leave the house, make sure your underwear is clean. So I always carry extra underwear in my shirt. Let's see what else I have in there. Oh, yeah, well, oh, the Rogaine. Picked this up for Pastor on my way. I forgot that that was in there. You know, it just kind of helps with hair regrowth because don't say anything, but right back there in the back of Pastor's head, right back there, see? It's just a little bit thinner, but he does, I've told him that it's not, but I was just going to slip this in and, you know, let him use this. And then, of course, there is always a need, you know, I'm, I'm the fixing kind of person. Uh, pastor doesn't hang pictures. He doesn't hang curtain rods. Uh, I hung every mirror in the bathroom. I'm like the mathematical kind of person of the thing, so... Everywhere I go, I always bring my drill just in case I need it because you never know what you're going to need. And in my purse is a little bit of everything. And then always in South Texas, ladies, you've got to have your waiters with you. 
just in the event it comes a sudden rainstorm, something's going on, the water rises up, and you don't want to mess up your shoes. There you go. I have these in my purse as well. They're right there. And then, of course, you know, one of the things in my purse that I have right now is, you know, when you're when you're out and about, and especially, you know, I love shopping at H-E-B. That's my grocery store. So, so when I go in, I kind of like, I have to have a mask, right? Because I'm, I'm a nurse, so I'm the, I'm the person out there in public that's wearing the mask. And so this uh, N95 mask is mine, and so I just kind of blinged it out. Let me just, just show you just a minute here. perfection, right? If you'd like me to bling yours out, just bring them to me, ladies. I'll fix them for you. And then, of course, there's the the safety goggles there, right? In case when you're shopping for groceries, you know, somebody spits on you or something, you don't want to get their bugs or their virus or anything. I also have in here my purse. I have my, you know, my disinfectant, my hand sanitizer. I have all that stuff in here. And then, you know what? When you're walking around now, you know, I always bring this because there is, let me see, two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet. That way, when somebody gets too close to you in the grocery store, you can just measure and tell them, back up, buddy, right? So all this is in my purse. And then I go down here, and, and I'm beginning, and I'm still looking. I'm looking for my keys. And I want you to notice, here's my keys. At the bottom of the purse, You know, that's peace, right? Deposited in you, you carry it in you, but everything that goes on in your life tends to hide the peace. So that's why Jesus said in the book of Matthew that when you are weary and burdened, he compels you to come to him. So we have to every day get up, go through our purses, go through our briefcases, go through our life and reach for peace, pull it out and take it and decide I'm going to walk the path of peace. Let her see we are not waiting for peace. We walk in peace. I already possess the peace that I need, but I need to experience it on a daily basis. Here's the thing about peace. It does not look like you picture it. Because Roman numeral four, it is impossible to experience peace when you connect peace with perfection, ladies and gentlemen. Embracing peace means you must surrender your expectation of perfection. Now, family, uh, marriage, parenting has never been and will never be about perfection. There is no such thing as a perfect marriage a perfect spouse, perfect children. Family, marriage, parenting is about the ability to navigate life, the ability to recognize that somehow on this morning you got up and stepped off the path of peace and possibly stepped into the path of chaos. The family is about coming to Jesus when you have lost your way. Let her be then the enemy to peace is not the people you encounter, the pace of life or the problems that arise because the path of peace is not about the absence of life issues because life issues are always present. Let her see walking in the path of peace does not mean that you will not go through the valley but that you do not go through the valley alone. Church, the valley is where life happens. It would be phenomenal to live on the top of the mountain all the time, but life is about the valleys as well. Following fear removes you from the path of peace and unsettles you and brings chaos into your home. The psalmist has a great passage. I want to read this to you. This is Psalms 23, and I'm reading out of the Passion. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me and his luxurious love. His tracks, or that word could say his, his paths, take me to an oasis of peace. 
the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and he revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure, leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and power. The comfort of your love takes away my fear, church. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of the Holy Spirit and give me all I can drink of, all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. As we close Letter D, peace goes with me because he is in me. John 14, I, le I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace. Not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, the scripture says, be courageous. Peace is not a feeling or a destination. Peace is a person and his name is Jesus. Wherever you are right at this moment, I want to say to you that Jesus is very, very real. His heart is for you. If you've never asked him into your life, let me invite you to do that right where you're sitting. We would be honored to pray with you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer right here, right now. And if you're sitting there and you would like to know this Jesus who brings such peace, then just pray this prayer with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that Jesus has died for my sins. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and to change me. I thank you, Jesus, that as you come into my heart, my life is changed. I thank you, Jesus, that you are now my Savior. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Church, Happy, happy Mother's Day. We are so honored uh, as we close the service. This is a, a surprise that we've been working on. We have a wonderful slideshow. It is pictures of you and your family, and many of you sent the pictures in that we had requested. We want you to enjoy this. We want you to be blessed on Mother's Day. We love you. We miss you. And we wish you were here with us this morning. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
we agree. Amen. Children and their children and their children. May his friend. 